Good evening and welcome to Tuesdays at 6. My name is Samuel Kufour Efriye, organ scholar here at St. John the Divine. I'm very excited to share today's program with you all in honor of Black History Month. The piece you just heard, titled Joshua Fit the Battle of Jericho, is an arrangement of a Negro spiritual written by Fela Suwande. Fela Suwande was a Nigerian organist, composer, and very talented jazz pianist. And he was one of the most influential West African composers in the earliest half of the 20th century. His works were truly intercultural as he drew from Nigerian, African American, and European idioms and writing styles. The next piece you will hear in tonight's program was written by Florence Price. Florence Price was an African American woman composer and pianist. In the 1930s, she entered into a competition by, held by what is now known as the National Association of Negro Musicians. That competition was also hosted by Wanamaker, and she won first place in that competition for her symphony in E minor. The end result of that was that she was fortunate enough to have her work premiered by a leading orchestra, which was the Chicago Symphony Orchestra at that time. This was very huge in the 1930s because that was the first time that a black woman's piece or music was premiered by a leading orchestra at the time. The piece you will hear is titled Adoration. The piece is a very lyrical and moving piece and I think that it is one of her best known works as there are arrangements of this piece for various instruments. I hope you enjoy the piece and the rest of the program as well. Thank you for tuning in.
The next two pieces you hear tonight is titled Wunya Mani and Mafro Patehuno. These two pieces was written by J.H. Nketiah, who was a Ghanaian ethnomusicologist and composer. Nketiah, who was popularly known by as Professor Nketiah, was arguably one of Africa's premier ethnomusicologists, and in his time, he was often referred to as a living legend. The first piece, Wunya Mane, speaks of friendship and how essential it is to have a good friend. It tells of how you only really see a friend's true colors when you're in conflict. The second piece, titled Mafro Patehunu, tells of the story of a man by the name of Kwame. Kwame is basically singing of, um, he's lamenting on his own life and how nothing he does goes right. And he gives some examples in the piece. And um, one of the examples was that um, some went for marriage and they got what they wanted. He went for marriage and didn't get what he wanted. Apparently the woman he either wanted didn't want him or could have also been that the family didn't want him to marry the woman. But in all, Kwame is lamenting on his rather sad life. These two pieces will be sung by bass baritone Kennedy Dankwa. I had quite a fun time putting these two pieces in particular together as it was a virtual collaboration and Kennedy is currently in Ghana at the moment. And I would say that one of the upsides to being socially distant from one another and not being able to make music together as we all um, knew before everything is that musicians are now inclined to try new things and also um, have more collaborations with people we might have not have been able to have the opportunity to perform with. The following piece, following those two pieces, is another piece by Fela Suwande titled Yoruba Lament. And I find it quite interesting that those two pieces are right on top of each other. So Kwame's Lament, which he's singing about in the piece Mafro Patehunu, and Fela Suwande's Yoruba Lament. And it's quite interesting to note that the composers did know each other. And um, it's funny that in Sawande's lifetime, when he went to London, he was often mistaken for Professor Nketiah, being that they were both West African musicians. Yoruba Lament uses the theme from a traditional Nigerian folk tune. Uh, Sawande wrote these pieces in the 1940s when he was organist at a church in London, in Kingsway, London. These pieces was special to him as I believe it connected him back to home. And he'd always wait for Africans or Nigerians in particular to enter into the church and then he'd play one of those pieces. He wrote um, that and quite a few other pieces that use traditional tunes. And he'd always say that um, he would wait till someone would recognize the piece and then he'd know that he had done something well. Had people not recognized the piece that he was playing, then he knew that something was wrong because these were all very familiar tunes that everyone should have recognized. Okay, 
Yamane, a Kenny Wunyaman and Uto Fancasa, a Kenny Asento Wana Uto Fancasa, only Papa Yonko Abira Samaba now be whom Yonko Paya de Casimau Nipenny. Akeni asemtu wana utafu, akeni asemtu wana utafu. Minya tempo na ye ye. Minha tempo na ye ye kwam ye, me je me huan ye. Minha tempo na ye ye, me kanu tempo na kosi se, me kanu tempo na kosi se. Me kone ma se, me kone ma se bo. Kwam ye na ma kruhe ati bianya se okro po bianya. Ni peni na kwa di pe, me kumi kope bia di ayro. Ni peni na kwa di pe, mi kumi kope bia di ayro. Ni peni na kwa di she, mi kumi koshe bia di ayro. Ni peni na kwa di she, mi kumi koshe bia di ayro. Kwa ni eno makrue ati bia nya se okro po bia. Ati nchi mama furu pate hu. Ati nchi mama furu pate hu. Ati nchi mama furu pate hu. Enwe. Minya tempo na ye ye. Minya tempo na ye ye. Kwa mye. Minji me huwe nye. Minya tempo na ye ye. Mi kano sempo na kosi se. Kamu sempo na kusi se, minkuni masem, minkuni masembo. Kami e no makrohe ati bianya se okro po bianya. Ni peni na kwagro, minkuni minko gubi e gumi dream. Ni peni na kwagro, minkuni minko gubi e gumi dream. Ni peni na kwa wari, minko minko wari bi obi anyeme. Ni peni na kwa wari, minko minko wari bi obi anyeme. Kami e no makrohe ati bi anya se okro po binya. Ati nchi mama furu pate hu, ati nchi mama furu pate hu, ati nchi mama furu pate hu enwe.
Finally, on today's program, I have the privilege of sharing with you three of my own original organ compositions. These compositions was born out of a grant that I received from my school to do research on traditional Ghanaian um, folk tunes and songs. And through this, I thought of an idea of what I could do with this research to connect it to my own study, which was the organ. And I decided, why don't you write some music based on some of these tunes? So that is what I did. The first piece is titled Ebenezer. And I took it, I took the idea or the tune from um, a singing style in Ghana titled Ebibinyum or in English, a Khan lyric. This was a practice done in the churches in which it was sort of a verse and refrain type of singing style in which um, someone in the congregation would stand up and by improvisation improvise basically a summary of what was being preached upon during the sermon. It usually happened during um, the sermon. And this tune was always um, answered to by the congregation by um, with a chorus. And the chorus was obviously something that everyone was familiar with. So the first portion was really solely improvisatory. Um, this piece, I wrote this piece in ABA form, song, song form. And I use fragments and direct quotes of the tune in the A section. Uh, the B section is some different material that I used and then I bring it all back together again in the A section. I wrote this piece in song form, ABA song form. So I quoted directly and indirectly the quotes of um, the original tune. And if some of you are familiar with the tune, you hear it. Uh, many different places within the piece. The B section is some different material and the A section comes back with the theme a little altered. The next piece is titled San San Kruma and the piece speaks of an aimless hawk who goes around snatching chickens. Um, I find it quite funny but apparently the reason why he's snatching chickens is that he is an orphan and has no parents and does not want to fend for himself. So his only other option is to snatch chickens. I think this tune in particular is one of the most popular, arguably one of the most popular Ghanaian um, traditional or I would say folk tunes that is known to um, parts of the Western world. The last piece is titled Tatale. Tatale is a Ghanaian dessert. It is um, basically fried pancakes, but it's not really pancakes. It's, I believe, overly ripe plantains, which is fried and stacked up on top of each other as you would a pancake. And it's a bit sweet and savory at the same time. So children love it. The piece is in the Ga language, um, another language spoken in Ghana. The other two pieces is in the Akan language. Um, this piece, Tatale, is basically a piece that uh, is kind of like a, a, a home type of song that a mother or, you know, parents would sing to children to tell them to come inside and eat the Tatale. Um, so the piece, um, if you put words to it, which there are words to it, it's saying um, the Tatale is ready, it's cooking, it's frying, come and eat, come and eat. And this tune is a children's tune, so I found it quite playful. And I tried my best to have um, incorporate playful aspects in the compositional style. I want to extend gratitude to the Source Foundation at Syracuse University for giving me this grant. Had it not been for this grant, I don't think I would have been writing any organ music per se as of the moment. So I want to extend my warmest gratitude to them. I do hope you enjoy the program. You have enjoyed the program tonight. And if you did like any of the pieces, I implore you to donate to our Friends of Music Fund. I've put the link here below and you can see. And this fund is important because it helps us run other musical events and events like these Tuesdays at six programs here at the Cathedral frequently as we do every Tuesday at six. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Black History Month, and I hope you and your family all stay well. Thank you.